Namaskar. Kamsutra is an encyclopedic work devoted to Kamshastra. It is the first. It is the first available work on Kamshastra in Indian tradition. There were works produced before it, but they are lost. Kamsutra is known to have been authored by Vatsyayana. Who was Vatsyayana? We don't have any historically valid record on him. He has been referred, Vatsyayana is referred in some koshas, lexicons in Sanskrit, like Vejayanti Kosh, Trikanda Shesh, and Nam Malika. He is regarded there as identical with Kotilya or Chanakya, the author of Arthashastra. Hemchandra is a well known philosopher and a literary theorist, a theorist of literary criticism. In his Avidhan is in Tamani. As well as Yadav Prakasha. In his Vajayanti, both of these, both of them say that Vatsyayana, Mallanaga, Kotilya, Tramida, and Pakshila Swami, they are the names of one and the same person. There is one more name associated with the authorship of Kam Sutra. It is that of Kamandaka. Kamandak is a well known author of a work, Kamandakiya. It's a work on Niti Shastra, ethics. And this Kamandaka is said to be the disciple of Kotilya or Chanakya. But these references to the identity of Vatsyayana, the author of Kamsutra, with Kotilya, the author of Arthashastra, or to the identity, to his identity with Kamandaka, they shouldn't be regarded as authentic. Subandhu, in his well known prose romance Vasodatta, 6th century, refers to Mallanaga as the author of Kama Sutra. And there is a commentary titled Jai Mangala on Kama Sutra. Yashodhara, the author of Jai Mangala, also says at the very outset of his commentary that the real name of the author of Kama Sutra is Mallanaga. He again says that Vatsyana is just the family name of, the, of this author, Mallanaga, and it is the name given to him. Mallanaga is the name given to him through samskara. The language, style, and structure of Vatsyana's Kamsutra as a Shastric discourse reveal its proximity to Kotilya's Arthashastra. Vatsyayana in this text, Kamsutra, explicitly cites Arthashastra. And he is indeed indebted to Kotilya's Arthashastra by the way of borrowing terms and concepts. He deals with economy. When he discusses the life of courtesans, Ganikas and prostitutes in the sixth book, sixth Adhikarana of Kam Sutra, and the earnings of the prostitutes, Vaishyas, and Ganikas, he discusses there. 
and then there are terms from Kotiliya's Arthashastra about the period of Kam Sutra or its Athar Vatsyayana. It is therefore right to hold that Vatsyayana is very close to Kotilya's Arthashastra. And he must have flourished in a period very close to Kotilya. M. Krishna Macharya, well known author of the history of classical Sanskrit literature, places Vatsyayana in third, fourth to third, between fourth to third century BC. Shama Shastri, who worked on Arthashastra, says that Vatsyayana flourished between 137 AD to 203 AD, while Pandarkar places him around 100 AD. A.B. Keith places him in 4th century AD, and A.K. Wardal, in his Indian Kavya Literature, Volume 1, suggests that Kamsutra was probably produced in 3rd century AD. Donigar and Kakar, Venigar, Wendy Donigar and Sudhir Kakar, who have translated, who have jointly translated Kam Sutra in English, in the preface to their translation, translation, they almost agree with Wardal by assuming that Kam Sutra must have been composed after 225 AD. But there are historical references in Kam Sutra on the basis of which an earlier date must be assigned to Vatsyayana. Vatsyayana refers to Sat Satvahana dynasty and has also mentioned the king Satkarni of this dynasty by name in his Kam Sutra. According to Puranas, Kuntala Satkarni was the 13th Andhra king in the Satvahana dynasty. He was the son of Nagendra Swati Karna, and he ruled in the Kali era 2487 to 2481. That is 615 BC to 607 BC. The Satvahanas flourished till 2nd century BC. After that, this Dynasty disappears. Vatsyana, the author of Kamsutra, as he refers to the Satvahanas and knows their history, chronologically he must come in a period when Satvahanas are there. On the other hand, Kamsutra became, came to be regarded as a standard work on Kamshastra by 4th 5th, 4th, 5th century AD. And it had made all the inroads in the cultural life, in Indian cultural life. The study of Kamsutra was supposed to be necessary by court agents, by men of taste, connoisseurs, or all ed educated, grown-up persons. It is evident, it is ev ev evidenced from various references to it by several authors in Sanskrit literature. We already have referred to Subandhu, who flourished, flourished in 6th century AD, or before it. Bhagavati, one of the greatest poets in Sanskrit, he belongs to 7th, 8th centuries, gives copious references from Kam Sutra in his play, Malti Madhava. There are phrases, almost sentences, cited in the dialogues from Kam Sutra in 
Malti Madhav. Damodar, one of the greatest epic poets in Sanskrit and the author of Kuttani Matam, a Mahakavya, cites the names of Vatsyayana and Dattaka as two authors in the field of Kama Shastra. Even Kalidasa appears to have been familiar with the text of Vatsyayana and he directly and he indirectly hints upon Kama Sutra in a number of places in his Kumara Sambhava. In fact, the eighth canto Kumara Sambhava illustrates many practices described by Vatsyayana in Kama Sutra in a very picturesque and picturesque and subtle way. Thus, Kama Sutra came to become a widely read, universally accepted work during the beginning of Christian era and a considerable time might have elapsed after its composition to make it popular all over the country. We can therefore assign Vatsyayana the period of 3rd to 2nd century BC. Coming to the tradition of Kamsutra works before Vatsyayana, Vatsyayana himself makes a kind of survey of the history of Kama Shastra and he cites the names of the exponents of this Shastra. The account given by him is partially mythical and partially historical from the modern point of view. The tradition starts with Prajapati. Vasyana says that after creating this world and the human beings, Prajapati composed a Shastra on all the three ends of life, dharma, earth and karma, with a view to regulate human life. Manu and Brahaspati took up first two Shastras, Dharma Shastra by Manu, Arth Shastra by Brahaspati, was taken up. But Kama Shastra was taken up by Nandi, the servant of Mahadeva Shiva. Nandi presented, presented an independent discourse on Kama Shastra in 1000 chapters. The same was abridged by Shwet Ketu in 500 chapters. Shwet Ketu is a well known Upanishadic philosopher. And in Upanishads also, in Chandogya, there are views by Shwet Ketu about men women relationships. And there also, there is, is a Kama Shastra discussed in the Upanishads and there are these are the thinkers who are also discussing Kama Shastra. So the Kama Shastra text authored by Nandi was abridged by Shwet Ketu in 500 chapters and it was further presented in a concise form by one Babra Vipanchala in 150 chapters. It seems that the text of this Babra Vipanchala was available to Vatsyayana because he cites Babra Vipanchala by name and he cites sentences from the text of Babra Vipanchala. The Kamshastra, as elaborated by these Acharyas, had seven sections which Vatsyayana names as Vatsyayana gives their names as Sadharana, Samprayogika, Kanya Samprayuktaka, Bharyadhikarika, Pardarika, and Vaishika, and finally Aupanishadika. These are the names of the books or Adhikarnas in Vatsyayana's Kamsutra also. Then Vatsyana informs that after this, independent treatises were composed by seven authors on each of these seven topics. And some of these seven works, out of these seven works, at least two, three were consulted by Vatsyana in his Kamsutra. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल दत्त का सिपेरेटेड दिक्सथ सेक्शन डीलिंग विथ कोर्टेजंस एंड प्रोस्टिट्यूट्स गणिकाज एंड वेश्याज एंड ही रोट एन इंडिपेंडेंट वर्क कार्ड दत्तक सूत्र दत्त का लिव्ड इन दिटी ऑफ पाटलिपुत्र एंड चारायण आई स्पोक ऑन जनरल टॉपिक्स दैट इज साधारणाधिकरण सुवर्ण नाभा कंपोज टेक्स्ट साम्प्रयोगिक सुवर्ण नाभ इज ऑल्सो साइटेड बाई वात्स्यायना घोटक मुखा हु इज ऑल्सो साइटेड बाई वात्स्यायना कंपोज ए टेक्स्ट कन्या संप्रयुक्त का कंपोज ए टेक्स्ट डीलिंग विथ कन्या संप्रयुक्त का दैट इज मेकिंग अप्रोचेस टू ए गर्ल और ए वर्जिन Gunardiya, he is also cited by Vatsyayana in, in Kam Sutra, composed a text on Bharyadhi Karika, on the duties of wife. Gonika Putra, he is also cited by Vatsyayana, composed a Paradarika on extramarital relationships. And Kuchumara, composed a text, Aupanishadika. On the secret devices for rejuvenation, vaji karana. Because of this compartmentalization of shastra into various disciplines, which are which were being developed as independent disciplines for shastras, its holistic view was lost. Vasyana says, Vasyana therefore presented. He says. in the in all in in the preface to his work in the first book adhikarana that because of its because of the treatment of different shastras which are integrated in kama shastra the holistic view of kama shastra was lost therefore i therefore i am composing a text to present the complete perspective of kama shastra This is in the first adhyaya of the first adhikarana. He says there are misconceptions and wrong notions about Vatsyayana. A K Warder, to whom I have referred, he was professor of Sanskrit in some university at Canada. He describes Kama Shastra. as the science of pleasure the term pleasure covers a limited aspect of kama and its shastra kama in fact is the desire to make life beautiful and to attain its fulfillment through regaining love kama also kama shastra also deals with aesthetics with family life and various social moral obligations and social organizations vatsyana's kama sutra is not simply a text elaborating upon the pleasures of life therefore it is wrong to call kama shastra a the science of pleasure because kama sutra also lays down the norms for life of a nagaraka an ideal citizen it establishes the codes for the conduct of it establishes the codes for the conduct regarding housewives co wives ladies in seralio antapur or raniwas and it depicts documents the life of courtesans and prostitutes kanikas and vaishyas in the bc era in the same way misconceptions are created by the work of vendidonigar and sudhir kakar their translation came out in 2003 they have turned kama sutra as a hindu textbook of erotic love kama sutra is a scientific work it is not composed for a particular community therefore it is completely wrong to term it as a hindu as a book for hindus it shouldn't be 
described in the terms of Hindu or non-Hindu. Also, Kamsutra is not just a textbook on erotic, on erotic love, as Wendy, Donigar and Kakar have termed it. It covers many more areas of human life. M. Krishnamacharya describes Kamsutra as a valuable treatise on sociology and eugenics. This also is a wrong description. Kamsutra does cover some areas on sociology, but it is simply misleading to call it a work on eugenics. Vatsyana certainly has no concern with the ideology and methodology preached on the name of the so-called eugenics, which is relatively a modern branch of study. Eugen eugenics is devoted to the study of heredity, effects of human genes on progeny. And Vasyana doesn't discuss progeny at all. He doesn't discuss heredity also. He has nothing to do with this so-called eugenics. The work eugenics, which comes from Greek eugenes or whale born, was coined in 1883 by Francis Galton on an Englishman and the cousin of Charles Darwin, who applied Darwinian science to develop theories about heredity and noble birth. Eugenics initially evolved by combining evolutionary theory and a theory of human heredity to focus political concern, concerns about population and poverty and control them. It's, it became a kind of perverted discussion under this branch. And uh, it, it, it was all pseudo-scientific. It, it started advocating race and class prejudices. Vatsyana has nothing to do with all this. It is rubbish. Fascist Hitlerites and reactionaries adopted eugenics with ulterior motives. Vatsyana is simply averse to any such idea of racial purity. Neither does he maintain that sexual union of the superior, superior class of male and female will lead to a superior progeny, as many of the advocates of this eugenics adopting some of the notions of genetic science have been bearing, have been saying. It is just wrong to see any connection between Kamsutra and eugenics. Kamsutra as a scientific work, scientific work on karma presents a comprehensive view of life. The cycle of human life is not complete without the realization of all the three ends, dharma, earth and karma. Kamsutra therefore deals with human life and its fulfillment through the realization of karma. Vatsyana in fact stands for freedom, variety and choice in life in his treatment of karma. As a social scientist of the first order, Vatsyana adopts the methodology which involves the study of current practices or prevailing norms or accepted order. He will explain them first. Then he will present the study of past practices with regard to an issue. Then he presents the diverse views of experts on the problem as a pur upaksha, the prima facie views. And then he discusses the views, he explores them, and he analyzes the various aspects of the problem. He also presents an analysis of the arguments that have been advanced by his opponents, the Purupakshins. Then he presents his own view. This, in, this includes the view as finally accepted or the Siddhanta Paksha. And he gives a rebuttal, rebuttal or rejoinder to the opponent's arguments. Then finally he gives his conclusions. This is the methodology of Shastra which, which he adopts throughout 
Kama Sutra. But he never imposes his own point of view. He attempts an analysis of the problem, gives his perspective, and then leaves it up to the man of good conduct or the man of wisdom to decide the norms. Vatsyayana in his Kama Sutra presents an encyclopedic record of diverse practices regarding sex and ancient Indian social and individual life. But he forewards against following these practices, the practices described by him. He forewards against carrying them to their extremes. The Shastra covers a scope larger than the perspective of an individual. Therefore, one should not start practicing whatever is stated in the Shastra. He says, one has to apply his or her own discretion as well as the consideration for time and place, etc. Because, because of the privacy and fickleness of human nature, sex has no limits. The purport of Shastra is to regulate sexual behavior and to stop human beings from excesses. This he says in the ninth Adhyaya of his of the second Adhikarana of Kama Sutra. I am citing lines from Kama Sutra, ninth chapter in the second Adhikarana. Na shastra masti tevetat prayoge karanam bhavet. Shastra arthan vyapino vidyat prayogan streka deshikan. Rasavirya vipakahi shoman sasyapi vaidike. Kirtita iti tat kimsyat pakshaniyam vichakshanaihi. Santeva purusha ke chit santi deshas tatha vidha. Santi kalasya yeshvete yoga nasyur nirarthaka. Tasma desham chakalam cha, prayogam shastra mevacha, atmanam chapi sampreksha, yogan yunjita vanava. Vatsyana here says that there are queer practices and abnormalities. But the description of such practices in the Shastra does not become a reason for their practice in actual life. Na Shastra Masti Teva Prayoge Karanam Bhavet. The contents of the Shastra are general. They cover the narratives, the, they document the prevailing practices. And the practice their applicability has a limited scope. Shastrathan Vyapino Vidyat Prayogans Tveka Deshikan. Prayogans Tveka Deshikan. Then he says, in Ayurveda, even the test potency and effects of dog's meat are described. But it doesn't, but that doesn't make it edible for the wise. There are some men, he says. There are some regions and there are some times in which these practices may not be meaningless. Therefore, after examining, examining the Deshakala, reason, the time and the behavior prevailing there and also the Shastra and above all examining himself, Atmanam Cha, a man should accept or reject these practices. So, The purport of the Shastra, according to Vatsyayana, is to regulate human behavior. And Shastra has two functions, documentations and regulation. Chanchanam, Shashanam cha. And Vatsyayana is both descriptive and prescriptive. 
he documents the practices as a social scientist so wherever he is documenting he is giving a caution that one should not start practicing if this practice is in vogue if this is the practice in a, in an in a reason one should consider himself and one should decide whether to adopt it or not yashodhara the commentator has made a very apt analysis of the structure of kama sutra he says that the shastra has two layers of structure tantra that is technique and avapa its applicability and its percolation in contemporary life tantra is the application part which deals with the methodology of love and sex but under under avapa there are included various means through which the social life an individual life functions like marriage individual efforts social relationships etc there is only one book yashodhara says and it is true also which is devoted to tantra which is the application part so out of this seven adhikaranas only the second adhikarana deals with sex as such the other adhikaranas deal with society social life aesthetics the life of nagaraka a man of taste his family life and activities done by this nagaraka is organizing goshthis poets meetings is going to gardens is pleasure trips and many other activities there is a section varya adhikarikam devoted to the duties and activities of a housewife there is a section a sixth adhikarana devoted to the life of courtesans so vatsyana documents the social life as a social scientist and a large part of his text deals with various social and moral aspects of indian society coming to the contents of kama sutra i will give you just an overview or an outline of the text it has seven adhikaranas as i have said and the first adhikarana deals with various issues related to knowledge systems and the life of nagaraka nagaraka vrat it is speaks about his house his kitchen garden his bedroom and his daily routine his life his meeting with his friends and there is a chapter on vidya samudesh knowledge systems there is a chapter on 64 arts so these chapters are very important from the point of view of understanding the development of knowledge systems as well as aesthetics particularly then the second book or second adhikarana is devoted to samprayoga which is men women relationships physical relationships and the whole anatomy and physiology of the body scientifically is also discussed there third adhikarana is devoted to kanya samprayuktaka acquiring virgins or for marriage approaches to a young girl by young man fourth adhikarana discusses bharya adhikarikam a book devoted to 
the duties and activities of an housewife of, of a housewife and fifth adhikarana is devoted to paradharika paradharikam on extramarital relations and sixth book is vaishikam on the life of courtesans and seventh book is upanishad upanishad dikadhikaranam upanishadikam adhikaranam it is on sacred devices the nagaraka stands at the center of vatsyana's conceptual framework nagaraka literally literally means a man of city the work the words nagaraka and nagarika also these are the two words vatsyana uses the word nagaraka and there is a word nagara also used in poetry so it's a kind of man of taste who has an aesthetic sensibility they are derived from the noun nagara you can say a man of city literally while the word nagarika is used as a general term applicable to any resident of the city nagaraka is not just a resident of the city he is a man of cultivated and refined taste and he also stands as a model for exemplification of vatsyayana's precepts in later literary, literary tradition the word becomes nagara and denotes lover par excellence it is even used for krishna in the vaishnavite bhakti tradition but vatsyayana has invested the term nagaraka with a special significance in kama sutra nagaraka is a man of refined taste who has also imbibed cultural values and elegance he sets norms and standards for the practice of kama in a wide perspective which includes pleasures of life on a holistic pattern and serves as a model for standards elaborated by vatsyayana yashodara rightly explains nagaraka as vidagdh jana vidagdh is a word for connoisseur in sanskrit then vatsyana describes the associates of nagaraka they are coming from middle class society pishmarda is even said to have come from village so these are the people and they form a society and they create a cultural scenario vasyana even says a holistic approach with regard to human life and its achievements its aims or ends that it tends to achieve this is also an integrated approach to human life and his treatment of kama and kama sutra is everywhere linked with the other two purusharthas dharma and artha there is hardly any chapter in kama sutra where vatsyayana doesn't cite or remember the authors of dharma shastra dharma to him is always to be given priority and social as well as economic considerations are also to be kept in view so he cites the acharyas of dharma shastra as well as artha shastra in the purview of dharma and artha vasyana presents a wide perspective of kama kama doesn't simply mean the sexual urge and its and its satiation kama is the fundamental principle of life nasadi sukta prigveda describes that it was the first phenomena that was that came out in the beginning of this creation kamas tadagre samavartatadi when there was nothing 
Kama was born there. So does Mahabharata. Mahabharata also describes Kama as the fundamental trace which remains with us, which lingers on with human beings. It is related to creativity, to create oneself. So, Kama is the desire for creation. And this is how the Vedic seers view Kama. Vasyana accepts this wide perspective of Kama. And in the very first Adhikarana of his book, he gives two, defini two definitions of Kama. The first definition is Shotra Tvak Chakshur Jivva Grana Naam Atma Sanyukte Na Manasa Adishthita Naam Sveshu Sveshu Vishayanu Kulyata Vishayashu Anukulyata Pravrtihi Kama The five sense organs, the ear, the skin, the eyes, the tongue and nose, presided over by mind, manas, and enjoined with soul are inclined towards objects suited to each, then this pravritti or inclination is kama. That means whatever we do in the world through our sense organs, reading a book, listening to poetry, seeing any performance of a dance or drama, any creative activity, our sense organs are employed. So any activity leading to aesthetic pleasure is karma. It is the vyapara or process of employment of sense organs in a wide perspective for all sorts of creative activities. Therefore, since a human being has to keep the three Purusharthas always in his purview. Kama is the Purushartha when we are doing any creative activity, when we are engaged in literary activity. For poets, for artists, Kama is their Purushartha. Kama not in the narrow sense of sexual activity but karma in the sense of creativity, which gives a sort of fulfillment, which leads to the creation of aesthetic life. This is the definition of karma given by Vatsyayana. And he always gives this wide perspective of karma in his view throughout Kama Sutra. There is a narrow definition which has a limited scope and this definition applies only to one of the sections in his Adhikarana, in his Kama Sutra. He says, Isparsh Vishesha, Isparsh Vishay Visheshat, Tasya Abhimani ki Sukhanu Vidha Palvati Artha Pratiti Radhanyat Kama. The experience of joy by touch between two human beings, men and women, leading to a fruition, palvati artha pratiti, is mainly kama. Kama is essential as food for maintenance of body. Ahara sadharmano hi kama. Palabhutascha dharmartha yoga. Kama is essential as food for maintenance of body. Also, it is the resultant of dharma and kama. There is a invariable relationship between dharma, earth and kama. There is no dharma without earth and kama, what Sayana says. And there is no kama without earth and dharma also. But he emphasizes over the priority as well. In the very first maxim, sutra, in Kama Sutra, he says, Dharmartha kame pyo nama. We go to dharma, earth and kama. And this should be the order also, the order of priority, the order of preference. 
that dharma comes at the first position, then artha and then kama. Teshu purva purva gariyan, he says. The first one is better to be preferred. The first one has more importance than the later one. That means artha is has more importance importance than kama and dharma has more importance than earth and kama both. So the author of Kama Sutra himself says that kama comes at the third sopana in life and earth and dharma they should always get upper hand. They should always govern your Kama Jeevan, your life which you are leading for the realization of Kama. And the realization of Kama doesn't involve sexual activity in the modern sense of term. It involves all sorts of creative activity which fulfills you, which gives you a holistic experience of life and which leads you to realization of yourself. That is what Kam Sutra aims at. So Kama is realized when Dharma and Artha are also properly practiced. Kama is an expression of oneself through sensuality to sense organs in various walks of life, arts, sports, literature, etc. also. It does include sexual activity that way. And love is a part of this karma. Literal meaning of karma is also desire. Desire not only for sex but other things, other creative things. Therefore, Vasyana does not treat Kama in isolation to the other branches of knowledge. He, st he stands for a holistic approach to life, comprising its fulfillment through realization of Purusharthas. And these Purusharthas are always viewed as interrelated and interdependent. Therefore, Dharma is not possible without Kama and Artha. And Artha is not possible without Dharma and Kama. This is what Vasyana also says. This is what Mahabharata also says. Dharma Artha Kama Samameva Sebhya Sebhya Yoyeka Saktasa Janu Jaganya Dharma Artha and Kama, they should be integrated in life. If a, if a person is devoted solely to one of them, then he is a sinner. Vatsyana elaborates upon this integral view of life and he suggests that some actions lead to the realization of all the three objects and some may lead to two and some may lead to only one. A man of discretion should pursue all the Purusharthas and he should choose the acts which lead to one of the Purusharthas, two of the Purusharthas or all the three Purusharthas simultaneously. The idea should be that when one is, when a person is doing one purushartha, he should not violate the pursuance of other two purusharthas. So one pursuance of one purushartha, one purushartha shouldn't come in the way of realization of the other two purusharthas out of the three, out of this trinity. And finally, moksha is also referred to by Vasyana in the sense that if these three Purusharthas are properly pursued in life, the final emancipation would come. So this is the concept of Purushartha in Vasyana. The second chapter 
in the first adhikarana of kam sutra is right and trivarga pratipatti the acquisition of three purusharthas three ends of life and at the very outset of this chapter vasayana says i will cite him verbatim shatayur vai purusho विभज्य कालम अन्योन्यानुबद्ध परस्पर सेनुपघातक त्रिवर्गम सेवेत बाल्य विद्यागृहणादीन काम चौवने स्थाविरे धर्म मोक्ष अनीयुषो यथोपाद सेवेत हि सेज मेन हेज टू मेन हेज वन हंड्रेड इयर्स ऑफ लाइफ ही शुड डिवाइड हिज लाइफ इन टू इंटर कनेक्टेड पीरियड्स फॉर दि पजेशन ऑफ दीज थ्री एंड्स ऑफ लाइफ avoiding their clash with each other parasparasya anupaghatakam the childhood should be spent in acquisition of knowledge the youth should be spent in enjoyment of kama the old age should be spent in acquisition of dharma and moksha then he defines dharma and he discusses artha artha shastra also and then he says that one should not come in the way of the other so, parasparasya anupaghat katvam this is the essence we should be followed at the end of this chapter vasyana says eva martham cha kamam cha dharmam cha dharmam chopa charan narah इहामूत्र निश्चल्यम अत्य सुखमश्नुते किंसात्शंका कार्य यस्मिन्न जायते न चाथग्न सुखम चेति शिष्टास्त्र व्यवस्थिता त्रिवर्ग साधक यदोरेक कार्य तदपि कुरवीत नेका बाधक equally indulge in dharma arth and kama and wherever whatever becomes the means of the three ends of life or two or one of them should be followed one end doesn't come in the way of the other this is the concept of purushartha in vatsyayana kam sutra and there are various various other issues related to human life which vatsyayana discusses and i will be elaborating upon them whenever there is an occasion thank you very much